Let's discuss heterogeneous catalysis hydrogenation and let's look at the mechanism for this. And for this, we're going to consider uh, palladium as our catalyst. So let's examine this a little bit further. And this is really following the Horuti Polani uh, mechanism, which is generally accepted. So the first thing we're going to have is that the hydrogen is going to bond to the palladium via its sigma bond. And this is called agostic bonding, or it will form a sigma complex. Now, once this happens, hydrogen will split into atomic hydrogen. and a very low amount of energy is required for this to happen. It's been shown to happen at 37 Kelvin. That's pretty cold. Once this splits into atomic hydrogen, it will fill octahedral holes. And it is possible for the hydrogen to migrate around the palladium at a temperature of 50 Kelvin. So again, very low energy process. Now, it's theoretically possible to have one hydrogen atom for every palladium atom, but for whatever reason, it only ends up filling about 70% of that, or perhaps a little less. That is still 900 volumes of hydrogen for the same volume of palladium, which is pretty incredible. And again, one of the reasons why this reaction is catalyzed is just the increase of uh, concentration. Now, an interesting property that is noticed is that hydrogen is capable of passing through the palladium. And it's the only substance that has been shown to do this. And so you can actually purify hydrogen by passing it through a thin foil of palladium. All right. So that's a little bit about some of the properties once you have hydrogen interacting with the surface of palladium. Now let's look at the mechanism. So I'll we'll have hydrogen gas, and we're going to add it to palladium. And this is going to split the hydrogen. 
course, that hydrogen is now contained within the octahedral holes of the palladium. And this process is a little bit exothermic. Next, for simplicity, we're going to hydrogenate ethene, so CH2, CH2. And we add that to the palladium. And we'll get a pi complex. So we'll have a surface of palladium. And we'll have this pi complex interacting with it. Next, we have this complex come into contact with some of the hydrogen that's been embedded inside of our palladium. So somewhere along here, some of the hydrogen will interact with one of the sides of this complex. Once it does so, it will hydrogenate one side. still have our surface of palladium here. And this will be bound in more of a sigma bond um, fashion, whereas here we had our pi complex. And then next, in what is supposedly the rate determining step, we have some more hydrogen migrate and interact with the second carbon. Once it does that, we will release this from the surface because the hydrogen will bond to the carbon. And that is an exothermic process as well. And that's now going to leave. This is a great determining step right here. Now, this process has been studied a fair bit, and it's determined, been determined that it is reversible. And you can study this using deuterium. So if we were to supply deuterium, into this reaction, you'll notice that some of these hydrogens will then be replaced by deuterium. And if it was just reversible and, and you could only do this one time, was not reversible, I should say, you would only see uh, deuterium here and here, potentially. Right? What we do see is that what you can have a complete scrambling. And so you'll get a distribution of deuterated species. So you'll have some with just one deuterium to all the way up to six deuterium. Of course, you'll have relatively few of those just based on um, the fact that there is still hydrogen around and it's capable of of doing this reaction. And it will do it a little faster because of the kinetic isotope effect. But that tells us that this double bond can reform from this species. And then this process can go back and forth. Now, overall, this reaction is exothermic and it's often quantitative. As long as you supply enough hydrogen, you should be able to hydrogenate all of the bonds. 
once that does that, if you do remove the product, then you could keep it from going back. And that should be relatively simple considering that this is a solid catalyst. But again, important things to consider is that the hydrogen is really free to move about within the catalyst. And another consideration is that if you have a very deep catalyst or very large chunks of palladium, it's not necessarily better. In fact, it's, it's worse. You would prefer to have thin layers of palladium. That way the hydrogen won't penetrate very deeply into the metal where it's not going to interact with any of the hydrocarbons that you'd like the re reaction to take place on. And so what ends up happening a lot is we'll use a supported palladium on a little bead or some other substance just so that a small amount of palladium is present, can provide a large surface area, and the hydrogen doesn't get trapped deep within the palladium, and therefore it can still interact with whatever we want to hydrogenate. So that's a little bit about the hydrogenation mechanism.